based on proximity of when you win the fight. So every fight that game was going to be on Liquid side of the map no matter what, and they were going to have to take it super late. And against Terrorblade, I don't think that's the game plan, you know? I, I don't like that idea, because that hero is one of the most terrorizing, blade-carrying mm. heroes in the game. I'm with so, you. Yeah. Now, I'll be curious to see whether Liquid run this Wisp as a core or not. I assume it'll be for Mickey. I think that that's the best place for IO at the moment, but it's still obviously open. And uh, VP, kind of a harken to the, to the old days, they used to put a much higher value on Shadow Demon. Funny, because uh, the remnants of the old DC, we saw five men do it the other day as well, and now Rezo's team in this tournament, that uh, DC lineup back at TI6 they were both a part of would always first to SD if available. Shadow Demon's kit is incredible. Like the purge, continuously yeah. one of the most unique abilities in the game to do that. Uh, the Shadow Demon disruption is one of the most, like the dichot, like the, the is it dichotomy, the aggressive as well as defensive. Sure. Is that the right word. Yeah. I think so. I think okay. It's not bad. Yeah, I think that was right. I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna sound really stupid if that if I use no, that. Just, just uh, lean the into fact it. that it's such a powerful, aggressive as well as defensive Holy tools. God. It's just a unique hero. He offers something yeah. that no other hero offers, and Solo is one of the best Shadow Demon players in the world. And the cool thing about picking in first yeah. round is, just like kind of like Oracle, it synergizes yeah. with a lot of carries. There's a lot of and heroes that are options for it, you. It's a really nice hero to play as a captain, too. You can push waves, you can save your allies, you have some really powerful kill threat, so you can always get something done on the map. It can be really difficult if you ever want something like an AA or a Warlock to find a place in the game, because there's like a free lane, but you can't push it. You know, you just stand there. It feels real bad. Uh, Void Spirit from Liquid. Could be pretty much anybody still. Their draft's still very open. Uh, high reach spirit heroes, typically quite good against these backline supports like Phoenix Shadow Demon. You want to burst at the start of a fight. VP's already committed. I was going to correct you there. I don't think this uh, Phoenix is a support. Oh, that's a good They've point. They've committed uh, the four position Earth Spirit, assuming it's a five Shadow Demon. Rezo looking like he's going to be playing the Phoenix. Yeah. This hero is... Uh, Surprisingly so viable still oh. as a core with all the nerfs to the laning stage, but Dude. they go for the Enigma Wombo combo. This I love Spectre, this. right? Like they just it, win the draft, Spectre? Am I wrong? They uh, picked the exact same lineup like four days ago and it's one of the best carries in the game versus Enigma. But uh, you might Am be I right. Something? They did they, you know it's in their mind too. They did ban it last phase in the previous game. So they know Spectre and obviously place a value on it. I think it's really cool how VP sort of stick to their identity. If you remember back when they still had Posh on the squad, he had most played Phoenix and they're one of the few teams to play it off lane. Obviously Solo and the squad still value it in this role and now Rezo's picked it up. And then Liquid, not to go back to Han again, but you know, we certainly played a, a lot of uh, Tempest, aka Enigma, back in the day, Who's and it's we? huh? Who's we? Any Han player, mm -hmm. and specifically Liquid. I know Insania would play it, Tiger would play it. Like the entire Team Liquid lineup can play Enigma. But is I think Enigma good? just doesn't fit the current pace of the game right now. He's like a Beastmaster that obviously you take Black Hole instead of Roar, both BKB piercing ones AOE, but. You just don't push as early. Like you're more of a passive, greedy pusher rather than. I I think with the Eidolon change, like now that they actually have move speed, you can okay. farm camps more efficiently and actually like, because the trouble was before they were so slow. If you ever started with Eidolons like more than five, ten seconds away from the lane of your hero's speed, yeah. you, you you don't have the split to push. Whereas now you can actually farm hard camp and like get them into the lane. And yes, yeah, SD has this pretty unique mechanic with the ultimate, but Enigma has two different sources of AOE pure damage, which is really uh, valuable um, and also massive team fight combined with global mobility and high paced uh, movement from the Void Spirit and the Wisp. Yeah, what I'd like to compare two heroes, I want to be very clear to people, I obviously don't think Enigma and Beastmaster are the same hero. I just think they're very similar for like the first 10 or 15 minutes mm -hmm. and then they scale very differently with like you said, AOE pure damage from the Enigma as opposed to the aura building physical damage from Beastmaster. I just think right now there's a reason why we haven't seen too much Enigma, but they are thinking pretty hard. They go for the Faceless Void, void. instead, so rather than the Into, chaotic team is fights. Is that really what you want against Enigma is the question. I'm not a huge fan, but it's not bad. Like, it goes better with your Phoenix than Spectre, I would say. But you're also against an Io, one of the overall better heroes against Faces Void. Yeah, I definitely. I is... like this pick more than the other game, though. Like, uh, meaning when Liquid picked Faces Void. Yeah, no, to your point, I would have preferred a Spectre, too. Um, especially because I just feel like it has better synergy with the Shadow Demon as well. This is also a little dangerous because the, the one thing I fear is a Enigma that can buy a BKB and have no interrupt. That is really scary. They have and Chronosphere if, and Egg. Egg to an extent, but 
I'm more afraid of like an earlier BKB. If you get the void in Black okay. Hole right okay, now, that's for, yeah, there you, isn't going to be a stop him. for it. You got Shadow Demon. Defensively. I'm saying, yeah, you can like, if he only gets the void. I feel like it's a pretty hard, cr like, you, you argue that, yes, once he gets BKB, he, he could Black Hole the void, but they're also, I feel like they could Black Hole the void, and if Egg's on the ground and Earth Spirit magnetizes rolling and whatever hero no one picks, which is going to be some backline spellcaster, we see an Invoker already banned that it may not even lead to a one fight. That's the thing for me. And if Void ever gets an Aegis this game, suddenly the win condition for the fight doesn't really exist, I think. Do you disagree? Well, yeah, or? if everything went wrong, it could it could go wrong for Liquid. But I'm saying, <laughs> You're right. Well, no, what I'm saying <laughs> is like, you, you are implying that if he gets the black hole off on Void, they win the fight. And I'm saying that's not the case. So it makes it like, I don't like that kind of game for Enigma. I like where if you do get that black hole on the crucial yeah. target, fight is won. Okay. So, Things why, can isn't, still go wrong, why isn't my Enigma point. particularly popular right now then? Because this hero has only been picked six times in this tournament. In, in the European division, it's been picked like twice. And overall, it seems like Beastmaster is just better in most circumstances. Uh, same, same, like what Kyle mentioned about Nature's Prophet. You get like three tier ones in the first 10, 15 minutes because you have these fast tempo pushing heroes. Enigma is just five, five minutes slower than these guys. Yeah, okay. the same thing. I, I will say this is looking like a progressively harder game for it for an Enigma because you have all this high tempo that VP can play with. Earth, Spirit, Void, Quap, like they just move around so quick. Enigma likes to be able to chill, you know, just kind of camp a lane. You want to play against heroes like Bristleback, you know, you see him TP and you're like, ah, eh, that's fine, it's chill, I'll just walk away real quick. But Quap off map is effectively always a threat. And when you have an Earth Spirit on top of that, you're just always going to be in danger. And typically you want to just kind of play in the off lane, push lanes by yourself, farm some jungle camps as well. You don't have that freedom, but ooh, baby. The no. Lycan comes out, Liquid going for like the all-in push. A flip of the previous game in a way. One team more in on the late game, the other trying to end fast. Oof. Limited stuns on Liquid though. The odds have now shifted after seeing that game one. They were neck and neck before. Still pretty close, 1.69 to 2.09, but Liquid seemed to be uh, kind of up to no good here. This IO now confirmed to be a support most likely going to be laning with the Lycan and Enigma in the off lane, four position for the Tiny. It could also be Tiny Enigma supports IO core. What is the deal with Liquid's three and four right now? I don't understand. Who is the three? Who is the four? They keep getting different amounts of got farm. Got two three and a halfs, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, fine. So then who's who's the who's the one who's going to be sitting in the off lane? Enigma always gets more farm no matter what position he plays. Like so, if he's yeah. a four, you're three. Becomes a four if he's a three. Your the way four that the win. Liquid's 3.5s are working is that someone takes over the mid lane. Yeah. So who do you think would be better taking over the mid lane? Uh, Enigma's going to stay bottom almost okay. certainly. Yeah. Uh, for, like, I, I think he operates best that way. He doesn't want to be defending his own tower. The mid tower is usually much more in a threat than your own off lane tower. Right. So it just you're going to get dove. Enigma's the type of hero that just gets dove because yeah. he naturally pulls the lane back by converting his own creep. What I was just going to say is I think Team Liquid's going to suffer similar things that they did the first game. And I, if I looked at individual heroes on the side of VP, I feel like their roles are much more distinct in this game. Like who's doing what, mm -hmm. how, how we cast our spells, all that kind of stuff on the map. And for me, it looks like a really hard lineup for Team Liquid to play. Yeah, Kyle... It it, it's, it's how many tough. fights? No, tell me how many fights. I want the Sam. Liquid so need two fights. Liquid they need, need a good rush fights. fight and a good fight outside enemy base. It's definitely a harder game. Liquid of uh, VP's draft's a lot easier to execute and find kills with. But if Liquid get momentum going, that snowball becomes an avalanche, and VP are just going to sit there like, oh shit, we have no ult. We're in trouble, and their base can just die. They've got to be really on point. If Liquid find their way onto the high ground with only two or three VP heroes in base, that's a dead tier three and a rax threat. First like and ulti is really important. Last note. Okay. Yes. That's all, that's all I needed to know then. Let's see which team may be able to dodge elimination as we move forward into game number two and send it over to our casters. That's right. What happens when Liquid turns a snowball into an avalanche? Can a polar bear survive in that, Jenkins? I think when Liquid turns into a snowball, it's, it's ice. That is a good point. And do you think a polar bear could survive through an avalanche of ice? Oh, boy. I think they'd be pretty used to that by now. Could be, yeah. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. As uh, Liquid do indeed, they've got a, a they've got a funky lineup. That's what I'm gonna say. I don't know quite how to feel about it. It's not. I, I don't feel very confident. It could be really good. It could be really bad. A lot of pressure on this Enigma, I think, to win every single team fight, basically, okay. <laughs> against these VP heroes. I mean, it's it's hard. You have the egg. You have the Chronosphere. There's plenty of backline jump to stop his hole. Uh -huh. 
But, you know, if this hero gets a lead and you can hit a good enough black hole, get enough heroes in it, you can win basically any fight. I mean, this is the only source of team fight that Liquid really have, is the Enigma. Yeah, the rest of it is a lot of fast play, right? There's this, like, pushing power of the Lycan. Zayats looking to be body blocked up a whole lot. They actually get the bounty rune as well. Zayats is just out to try and survive, but he's not going to. Boxy picks up the first blood, and he's already set in a potentially better position than he was last game. He starts with the boots. He's just straight roaming. Taiga's just off lane Enigma this game. What did he start with? Basilius? Okay, that's that's interesting. You know, I've, I've wondered what an Enigma in the current patch would go. You, you mm -hmm. don't see this hero play too much as an offlaner or just in general, so it'll be cool to see what he theory crafts the build is. Uh, I was thinking maybe he'd build this into a Veil because it does work with that pure damage, mm -hmm. but uh, I think the, the Bassi is just like the most efficient mana of regen that you can get in Dota currently. You know, the Sage's Masks, they did get nerfed. Everybody was spamming those, having like mm -hmm. two Sage's Masks casually, and uh, they got nerfed, but the upgraded items still have the same mana regen that they had before. So if you upgrade, it's still good. My question is, do you think that uh, that Boxy is not going to be bottom? Do you think, like, are they going to be playing Taiga in the lane, or are they going to be playing Taiga where he's just, you know, taking away a uh, lane creep every single time, then going farming up the uh, the triangle, or the hard camp, I guess should, I should say. I think you can do that. I think Boxy starting with these boots, like, you could possibly put a little bit of pressure on this Phoenix, who mm -hmm. is notoriously terrible at level, at, one. At level 1, and just give Taiga like the solo XP bot because he's going to bring the lane back, but then Boxy would farm this game too would be really nice. I mean, this Void Spirit hero, he compliments, he, he compliments everything so well. If there's something going on, he will make it better yeah. because he just has disables, he has mobility, he has BKB piercing slows, BKB piercing damage. Like This hero does literally everything, so if he can get some farm, and he's also like the best jump hero in the game. If he can get some farm, I think it's I think it's going to be really good in this game. His uh, if he could get all the way to an Aghanim scepter, it's very impactful here against this VP lineup. But even just having the the first item Yule scepter, it would be really important for his own survival against a potential orchid on the Queen of Pain. We have the time dilation of the void. Yeah, that's There's a lot of one. big problems. Yep, for sure. If he can if he can jump one of these Phoenix Void mm -hmm. whoever. Uh, one of these like big team fight heroes. I, I think that's how Liquid can win team fights with having Shit. inferior team fight ability, basically. Yeah. Um, once again, if Taiga is hitting like really sick black holes, then it's very different. If he's got a big gold lead and he can, you know, play with the blink dagger and BKB, it's very different. But it's going to take a pretty pretty good early game for him. But on the Virtus Pro side, right? Like they, it, it just feels like their lineup naturally clicks. I mean, we've got all the team fight combinations that we've been talking about before, right? We were going to have the uh, the Phoenix Egg with the Chronosphere protecting it. Uh, we've got this very fast-paced, uh, like, tempo hero in the mid lane for no one, playing Queen of Pain rather than the Fury on this time. Less pushing power, but it just, just is this natural buildup of right. team fight in late game. Yeah, 100%. Just as fast as that hero. I love seeing him on heroes like this. Just take control of the entire game. That is exactly what he does best. Mm -hmm. what, basically destroying the enemy team in terms of kills and pressure on the map, but also taking farm along the way. I think that's where he does the best. I, I don't like seeing him on, you know, some SF where he's just jungling and treads, drums, that's uh, that's BKB, that sort of thing. Like, I love the Yule's blink if he were to go for SF. Like, I'd love mm. to see him doing this, like, high skill stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is where he does... He does best, and no one is just one of the best laners in the game. Yeah, like he, it, it complements each other, right? When you're a really flashy, aggressive player, and you're really sick at laning, you get yourself the advantage off the laning phase, and then you just naturally snowball it with big moves. Yeah, some players do sick laning, and then they just go jungle, and, you know, that can work as well if you have some other lanes that are, if you have some other cores that like to roam around and do things. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the mid lane right now, just the way it's played, really lends itself to doing both of those things, which I think is why we see VP doing so damn well. It's funny their webcams don't turn back on when they're reconnecting. Yeah, might have been just so many times of, you know, maybe restarting the PC or restarting the router or figure something out that yeah, uh, you, yeah. you forget about it. This is cool. I, I think I think this is good. Playing with the Void Spirit Yeah. and just doing this combo kind of like OG where they have the support and then the Wisp is a core, except you're just combining the two supports here and zoning out this level one Phoenix, so Zayats, he goes for the creep pull. 
This is what you have to do. <laughs> and see, even Mickey was uh, thinking about making a move over, see if he try and help catch Zayats here. Yeah, the Remnant does manage to pull him back in. Zayats, Insania, trying to get in front of him a little bit. He's going to go for the kickback. He's only pulling half of the creep wave here, so this is not too bad. And it's uh, for Liquid. It's going to be even better for Liquid if they can actually get this kill. It's going to be up to Boxy, though. Zayats, is he actually just suiciding right now? I thought he was maybe going to suicide to the tier two. No, he's going to cut up, but that's where the Aether Remnant is going to catch him again. And this early, early tri lane is beginning to pay off. It did give resolution I was gonna say, to get level two, though. I feel like this is good, great for VP. This puts resolution solo against a Mickey Tiny. Like that, Phoenix is fine with that. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting there and getting XP against a tri lane. That's not supposed to happen. Liquid has to chase the Earth Spirit, otherwise he cuts that wave. I think that's amazing, an amazing play from VP there, just to do that and waste so much time. If he dies immediately, it's different, but... Yeah, the way he pulled the, the creep wave, the, some of those creeps back, now just means a big wave is going to be pushing into the Phoenix right. again, and they're just going to get some levels, and here's the smiley from Resolution. And Phoenix got level 2 because he only pulled half... I was sitting there thinking, like, why the heck is he pulling half the wave? Because Phoenix probably got denied on the first wave because there's yeah. a tri-lane. Mm -hmm. If he has two creeps, he's level 2. Now all of a sudden it's way harder to tri-lane against him. Yeah, I think he actually got two different creeps at denied at least. Because he barely had level 2 yeah. with a, a wave and another 2 creeps Oh, we can actually see. So six six creeps from Mickey's. I, I would imagine that he probably got a deny or a couple denies on the first wave. Yeah. Considering it was way freer than these ones. Yeah, super well played by VP so far. They know their early game, man. Like, they, they really know how to get the most out of, like, the one to two minute mark. Which and, and that was always about. Virtus Pro to a T, right? Snowball lanes, win game. Yeah, that is literally, yeah, that's what they did when they were in their, in their prime with m most of this same roster. You know, yeah, so I have to wonder if that's something about the leadership of Solo, that he, he tries to really uh, focus on those things, hammer them home, or if he's the one perhaps bringing them to light. I mean, he is the only guy that's picking SD. Like, this hero's not really picked that much. It's just the occasional, like, A or B tier pick for Yeah, teams. like, oh, Luna got picked up. I guess Shadow Demon's oh, good Oh, Terrible got picked up. I'm going to pick Shadow Demon. It's, yeah. But he's just like, no, this is a good hero. And I think that hero lends itself to doing extremely well in the lanes. Like, the Shadow Poison, extremely powerful against certain heroes. The Disruption, powerful against other heroes. Pull back here on the Phoenix, and they do manage to burst him down before he can get the dive away. Very important kill, because as you said, he was getting those levels that uh, he wanted to get. Taiga, he calls in some reinforcements from Boxy, so they get that one kill. Say, okay, we're going to stop tri laning here. We kind of did what we came to do. And Boxy will join Taiga in the duo once again. Now, Boxy's got the Orb of Venom, so he can slow him down. But oh my just... god! Uh, what was that RNG? Like, you know, he might have died anyway, but seriously, what was that? Level two. Man, I don't know. Sometimes Void just looks like, Faces Void can look like a bullshit hero. Like, that makes him look, that makes the hero look like he's great at laning. He is, he is really not oh. the strongest laner. Sorry, I, I just thought this was this was cool. Uh, so Lycan, Lycan's like a Dragonite, right? If you're sure. opposed against a, a hero that wants to move around the map, you're threatening his tower. So maybe this Quap won't want to move around so much, but Lycan's even cooler because he throws a wolf to each one of the power runes might be able to deny the rune as a result. Yeah, very nice. Do similar yeah. thing on Broodmother, deny those runes. Yeah. Taiga, quickly surrounded here, is going to get a decent amount of damage on ILTW. They eat the remnant and misses on both of them, too. So they don't manage to get that counter kill. Two to three now. And it's Virtus Pro. Picking up some kills in this bottom lane. Have a nice little stack here. Yeah, the SD is really nice setup for the Enigma. I mean, the hero literally just walks away from you, right? So yeah. getting the Void right on top of him and the illusions to body block, there's not really much Enigma can do. You can't, he can't just like leap away. He doesn't have a blink. doesn't have a, an AOE disable, anything like that. Mm -hmm. You surround him by units like that and there's not much he can do. What I find a little bit awkward here is we're going to watch Boxy miss out on a bounty room because of that disruption. At least he got the one that he was on top of, but obviously the other one, Solo, will collect. The... Uh Damn, what was the point I was going to make? Oh, he kind of has to get BKB because of Earth Spirit, right? It's just such an easy way to, uh, like, just throw the boulder down and silence yeah, him. Yeah, 100%. Right? You, there's, there's no other choice, really. Or, I mean, you can go for the Aura build. That, uh -huh. But then I feel like you might lack a team fight. You're really banking on snowballing the towers, which can happen. I mean, they do have a Lycan. They do have oh, a Lycan yeah. with a tiny safe lane, so they can definitely snowball. But... It takes oh, a... Oh, 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 still gets him with the disruption. That's probably going to be a dead IO. 
Mickey will try and protect his support as best as possible with the Avalanche. It catches Resolution mid-flight there, so that was perfect. It actually does save him. If anything, they're going to get the kill onto Solo with that nice toss back. And Sania helps him out with the damage, and they get the kill. Nice, nice. response from the Liquid Duo here in the top lane. They're going to maybe get a second one here on Zayats as well. He doesn't have the roll up fast enough to get away. Second kill, and now a toss forward. Resolution doesn't have the dive. They're going to try and put Boxy right on top of the Avalanche as well. Three what kills? What a big turnaround. Uh, that was supposed to be a simple kill onto the IO, and it turns against Virtus Pro. They lose three. Man, I mean, speaking of snowballing, this is exactly how they want to start out in this game with these two extremely fast cores in the Lycan and the, the Tiny. I mean, uh -huh. Enigma is really their late game hero in this game. So if you can snowball these two cores, make space for your Enigma, I think... I think this game's looking great for them. Liquids, they're looking good in this one. The odds were a bit different, by the way. They, um, a little bit more in favor of VP, but. Yeah, people are. I saw that performance by Virtus Pro. It was very convincing. After the start, though, I wouldn't, have, I don't know if I would agree with those. He has the hole. I just have mana for it. Yeah, just trying to get some damage in. May still be able to run him down thanks to the help of that wolf. He disruptions himself to try and buy a little bit of time, and the Chronosphere actually catches most of the Eidolons there and stops the damage that would have finished off Solo. It did cost, cost them the Chronosphere, but if they can get the second kill, it'd be nice, but can't stick onto him. If they give Enigma any sort of extra regen or base int, I think he's going to be a good hero. Like, this is Enigma's biggest problem, is you use one spell and you can't use whole. You need mana boots. Yeah. Like, this hero does not function without mana boots. And that is a really scary requirement to have in your hero. Here's what we were talking about. Uh, as soon as the Queen of Pain leaves lane, Koifa immediately threatening the tower with the early Necronomicon pickup because you can do that as a Lycan. Now he's going to try and kill Solo here. The disruption was used after all. This is a freebie, and you can go back to hitting that mid tower. They still have in the top lane this Queen of Pain trying to go for these kills. As he loses his mid tower, he has to get these kills. And he does manage to get Mickey at least. Insania, less important, but probably just as likely to go down here as he has no tether escapes, really back in the lane he goes, but I'll just take out. Bottom lane, there's the black hole, and they do manage to get that Faceless Void. Boxy still trying to help him get out of this sticky situation. The Eidolons are taking up the towers. Here comes the Phoenix. He's TPing in. Can he get there in time? He's not actually going to go for the Enigma. I think maybe he could have dove. It would have been a close call, but he's not able to catch either one as a result. In fact, Boxy, he's going to turn around, see if he can kill Zayas. They're going to go for it. Dissimulate. It hits him. He reads it correctly. He reads where Zayas is going to be headed. Hits him with a Dissimulate, finishes him off. He may die here as the Soul Catcher with the burn damage is coming in. Disruption, Boxy, can he help him out? Malphys, here comes the heals from Insania. The Soul Catcher's going to wear out. He gets a little bo bonus of HP, and now Boxy turns on a solo. Another TP coming in from Zayas. All of these, Boxy, he has Dissimulate. He goes down to low ground. Oh, he doesn't actually go down to the river. That's where no one was going to be, but he does head into Zayas, who stops that TP be pretty quick. Yeah, I get, I get why he went that way. Uh -oh. No, no I one think, was coming in. I think Ty got TP. Oh, he didn't TP. He needs in. to TP. He, he needs to get out. Okay, he's good. Pick the right place to juke too. Boxy, unfortunately, didn't. You know, just a bit of RNG there. Tyga gets out, and you know, really, he's the core in this game. Anytime there's an Enigma in a game, he's the he's the light game carry. This hero can one v five if uh, he gets a good enough hole. Yeah. You want another uh, insane stat here, Janky? Yeah, hit me with that stat. The uh, this tiny contest rate eighty percent in this tournament. That's I, pretty insane, right? I think that's fair. I mean, so you would expect a hero that's so popular, picked and banned, right? That it would have a acceptable win rate. You would Taiga, think so. You're gonna watch him dying to the supernova. He's very, very dead. Uh, sixty-two percent win rate. Yeah, that's that's quite high. Yeah, that's very that's, high. That's that's very high. I, I thought it was going to go the other way. No, no, no. We can no. see here why he's got such a, such a high win rate. Look at the damage this little guy does. So uh, what I was leading into is is most of the time we've been seeing this as uh, you know support. Sometimes we'll see it mid or something. That is correct. Like, it's mostly four. What do you think about this safe lane? Uh, the tiny IO combination. Like, do you think it's uh, like as potent as it used to be? I think this works because you have a Lycan mid and you have an Enigma offlane. You okay. have these two heroes that are... I mean, Lycan's a carry. Enigma is the carry. Mm -hmm. So you're basically playing like a mid or an offlane tiny. 
in this game. Even yeah, though just he's with a little lane. extra net worth, a little bit of a bonus. A little bit of a boost. Yeah. yeah. And we can see that Liquid, they really like experimenting with these like net worth distribution ideas. Yeah. Which, once again, I find so interesting. There's not many teams that do this. Boxy basically playing four position. You have Io, who's always a 4.5. Like in mid, this is a carry. Tiny, this is this is a mid hero. Here comes Don't Big Smoke Gank. They are bringing all their heroes here to this lane. Boxy's going to try and stop the TP in here for the Queen of Pain to do to a lot. But with the Chronosphere, they're going to make sure Koifa does die. He quickly kills the Courier here. Is he still going to get out, though, Boxy? Zayat's going to roll in. It's close, but he's just a little bit shy and a little bit too late. That's a big kill for them to pick up, particularly because it defends this bottom tower. I mean, Mickey's still farming. This is not the old tiny Io where he's going to carry in the late game by any means, but he's still going for an Echo Saber. He's still probably going to pick up an Aghanim Scepter. Right? Like, you know, he's still a core you have to worry about, at least to some degree if you're letting him free farm. But with that being said, you defend that bot tower, and of course, you have free farming cores too. Spirit Vessel Queen of Pain. Yeah, Very I was cool. going to ask you about that. It's been a while since I've seen this build. I used to love this build on offlane co-op. Yeah. The damage between the dagger and the vessel is enough to basically take any hero from full to zero with two vessel charges. You just stay on them with your constant blinks, your constant daggers that have obviously a way lower cooldown than duration. And they, they die. No, no matter what, you'll kill somebody. You have enough damage. Still has the dive up, so unless they can get this tiny on top of him, which they do for a second. Avalanche, toss forward. Boxy's going to go in. He does manage to pop the supernova, and they got one of the fire spirits out, so they're going to retreat. No one's going to try and punish them here, and Zany is a little bit low. They do still have that sonic wave, so if no one positions himself accordingly. Toss back, though, into Taiga, into the black hole. There's Resolution trying to lay the damage out to get some sort of counter kill, but he has to skedaddle. He has to jump away. Insania does get burnt out, it looks like, from the dagger. And Boxy, he goes down to Zayats, so they actually get a decent response from Virtus Pro, even though we just watched the Queen of Pain die. But if you're liquid, you get the tower. So I think that's the more you know primary concern for them is this frees up this bot area for Enigma to farm. And it's so annoying having a summon hero down here. We saw this with Beastmaster in the last game. Careful solo of all those Eidolons. They do a lot of damage. He's going to go for the TP out, and he will just make it. Solo, let's see if he survives through the Eidolons. He will not survive to Boxy. That is the real killer right there. Now they're going to relocate in Resolution. He dove out, and he's got Tranquil Boots. That'll help him get some distance, but not far enough, it seems. Toss up in the air, and another Ether Remnant for the catch. Boxy doing a really nice job on this four position. Uh -oh. Back into the top lane they go, though. Insania pulled Mickey in here. They wanted to still be able to fight it out. Tossed up, ILTW quickly time walks off the damage. Mickey looks to be able to stick on top of him with the Avalanche. Now, the Chronosphere is coming up in a second, so Mickey, he's got to be careful, especially with no one closing in. The Lycan, he spotted all this with the Wolves, and he's going to pop his ultimate here. Zayats has committed his roll in, and immediately the rest of Verda Pro is like, nope, that's a level 12 Lycan with the Necro 3, boys. It's time to leave. It's time to get out. It's time to TP away. No one. He makes it out. Time walk over to the other side of Cliff. Looks like uh, ILTW, he knows the danger that is present to when the big bad wolf is out. Yeah, really all they have to deal with him is the Chronosphere. And if you're going to Chrono a Lycan, you better be sure that you have some damage near you. Yeah. Like, you, you can't just Chrono to save. If you Chrono to save, then Liquid just takes a tower because you don't have Chronosphere. Because, once again, it's the only option versus the Lycan. Mm -hmm. So you basically kind of just have to sacrifice your supports there, or your support, and then have the Queen of Pain TP out. If there's any sort of disable, we have seen how quickly Lycan shreds a Queen of Pain, especially with these new Necro units doing hero damage. Yep. So they do a lot more damage to heroes, but less to creeps and less to towers. I feel like Lycan's another one of those heroes that doesn't care super much about that change, just because very likely he'll take that tower anyway even with the loss of damage on buildings. Yeah, I mean, he, he hits heroes with the creeps as well, so... They're going to try and deal with this supernova really quickly. Turn around, kill it! The sonic wave goes out. It takes away Insania. Mickey 
He's on the run here. He's got some heroes around him. Boxy's going to make his entrance. Does a decent amount of AoE damage with the buyback coming in from the IO to help bail out Mickey, but it's too much. The Chronosphere, he's beaten down before Insania can give him the helping hand in the heals. Insania, is this going to be a dieback? The roll in from the Earth Spirit. ILTW is able to stick on him. Double kill there from Zayats, but he will die underneath this tier 2 tower. The bigger thing is, we had ILTW get out, TP back to mid, and continue to farm. Yeah, ILTW has a lot of weight on his shoulders this game. He is the primary hero that is going to be dealing with this Enigma. He's the primary hero that can actually deal with the Lycan. You could argue <laughs> even the Io. Uh, you do the Earth Spirit for the backline jump. You do the Queen of Pain Vessel. That is definitely an option. I really like how VP has itemized, but there's a lot of pressure on him given that he's the highest net worth too. It's like he's got he's to not die. If he dies one time, I think he's going to work. <laughs> It's such a solo thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. Solo is uh, is is such a fun five position to watch. Remember when when VP was super dominant? He was playing this disruptor, and like a level three disruptor would show up to the off lane ganking, and you're just like, what? He, What's happening? <laughs> he does not participate in what is like standard Dota. That guy does not play the same game that we all play. I, LTW, I remember... they know he's here. They're going to be able to hit him with the Rendit. Nice position there from Boxy. Opens it up. It's the initiation that's required for the follow-up there. Taiga gets the black hole. Zayats looks like he didn't have a removal, and he kind of panicked there and decided, well, I'll roll into the black hole. That doesn't work, though. No one's going to be chased down by the Lycan. Zayats is still in trouble on the side. Tossed over to Solo. So they're just focusing on getting as many kills as possible. Nice shot by Zayats, though, as he does manage to kill. Taiga still, though. It's a lost team fight for Virtus Pro. Four dead, and they're going to be losing this tier one top. This is kind of similar to what happened with VP in the last game, where there's just so much net worth and so many problems that they have in terms of the cores on the Liquid side that, sure, you can commit everything to kill Taiga on Enigma, but then there's a Lycan that's running rampant. There's a Lycan that's going to kill your Queen of Pain. There's still a Tiny with a Wisp behind him who's got an Echo Saber. It's... It's so you're, really, you're referencing this is the same problem that flip. Liquid had last yeah, game, where exactly. they're trying to target Zayats and he was too tanky for them. Right. It's it's a, it's a mirror, and so maybe they go with the Liquid solution. They try to hit a big Chrono. Okay, misses the Ether Remnant. Well, they won't have that Chrono for another ten seconds. Still and playing it, very aggressive. Just trying to get in there. Looks like they want to take this safe lane tower while there is big cooldowns, right? No relocate, no transformation, no black hole. And maybe a kill on the boxy here, but it's a little hard to catch him uh -oh. with the actual Rezo. step. And now Rezo, oh, gets off the supernova. Trusting his team to be able to protect him here, but they're not going to be able to. The Chronosphere, it comes too late. It was going to be so pretty. They're still managing to kill Insania, though, but it looks like Boxy's going to man up and see if he can kill Solo. Solo had tons of stacks on him, though. A bunch of magic wand charges, but Boxy's still going to be able to catch up to him, trying to jump away with the Dissimulate. Still has an Aether Remnant that manages to catch this Faceless Void, but he jumps right into Boxy here. No bashes just yet. Boxy, Astral Step. He's got another Aether Remnant. He's got his Yule Scepter. He can Yule Scepter the Void. Astral step in another two seconds, and yeah, they're gonna give up on this chase. They can't catch him. Boxy, that was some big boy play right there. Nice juke. Those were very nice jukes. Uh, okay, you, somebody should clip that. That was very nice. I'm really impressed how he keeps on hitting these ether remnants right next to creeps. Yeah, no, he's like he, he's putting them at really interesting angles. Yeah, like he's clearly very practiced on this void spear here. Like Boxy's got to be a void spammer. Which is funny, because you, you see him playing so much Puck. You think it's the only hero he can play, but he's destroying this game. Mickey finds Solo here. And with that kind of pick off, they're going to feel good maybe about going for one of these Tier 2s nice and early. Uh, kill onto no one, and yeah, this is free whatever you want. You want to take the Tier 2? You want to go for Roshan? The world is your oyster right now if you're Liquid. 11,000 net worth lead as we hit the 20 minute marker. And you know that this game, they have so much tower push. We've seen games where teams take this snowball advantage and then they don't have a way of actually taking advantage of it with towers, but... You've got three pushing cores on yeah. the side of Liquid, so they certainly don't have that problem. They built up a net worth lead and they're going to take a tier three super early. Pull back on a solo. He's dead again. Boxy! He's just an executioner in the server right now. 
He gets in there, chops the heads off of any support he finds, and gets out nice and clean. Mickey, slow down here. They managed to take down this melee barracks. They have to relocate up, so if he's really in trouble, Insania can bail him out. And Virtus Pro, they're going to have to watch as Liquid walk away with that. The, the remnants of the melee barracks still crumble next to them. Yeah, this was so nice. Yeah, look at that. That, that remnant ankle. alone? Yeah, okay. That's... So we're just going to show the... I mean, the Remnant alone is like an amazing play. Yeah. You, you, so many creeps chasing you, which arguably, like, you want that to ha be happening in that situation because it makes it hard to keep chasing because they get in your way. They body block you, right? Yep, yep. So as long as he can hit that Remnant and high skill it, the creeps, you'd prefer them to be there. If he didn't hit that Remnant, the creeps get you killed. Yeah. What a pick up here on the Queen of Pain. This early Yule Scepter from Boxy doing some work here. The Aghanim Scepter. Oh, it almost got up the walls. The walls, they're going to track down no one. They managed to get the kill while the relocate happens around the Supernova. And Taiga, he sees his opportunity. He hits the two-man black hole. They've caught the void. G -G. And now Virtus Pro, they're out. Jesus, that happened in a hurry. All of a sudden, Liquid have tied up this series. We started off this game too, Jenkins. Asking ourselves if Virtus Pro were just going to continue the train that happened in game one, but no. That train's going in the 